Look at this beautiful side of beef. It's YouTube Wednesday. Side of beef. Looking at reference images for size, I want my side of beef to be six foot long top to bottom. A real side of beef is about seven foot long top to bottom, uh, but I want mine to be a little bit shorter than that because I want it to be able to hang one foot from the ceiling and hang one foot off the floor uh, because most haunted house walls and most ceiling heights are around eight feet. So a seven and a half foot long side of beef wouldn't give you much leeway that way. So I'm altering the design a little bit. I'm bringing it down just a little in order to make it uh, a size to fit inside of a haunt. I'm going to look at reference materials and I'm going to trace out just the outside shape of what this ought to look like. I almost always use a yardstick. Uh, I love yardsticks. They make me happy. It is a solid, simple measurement tool that does great. So now I have my center marked and I have my two edges marked. I've drawn the basic shape. Now I want to run a straight line through the center of it because that's where this prop is gonna hang from. I'm gonna hang it from that leg up there. That's my hanging point. Um, these, these will be designed to hang in a haunted attraction. So I ha you have to plan that. You have to have the right structure inside. You have to have the right mounting point. Um, th that you can't just hang up a foam prop. A lot of the times it's own weight will make it fall apart. So design and engineering is pretty important to what we're doing here. I'm just gonna kick my table over. And know that if a line is coming out of there, I'm actually going to make the line come out right behind the ankle here. It's not going to be right out of the end of the foot. So this will be the center when it's hanging up. A five gallon bucket is going to be down at the bottom end and that's what's going to be what gives this weight. You can add anything to the bucket that you want in order to give it a little bit of weight, depending upon how much weight you want it to have and uh, how much it swings. So the handle of the bucket is where you will attach. I'm going to use a, uh, a nylon strap that's going to run through the body down to the bucket uh, and then you'll be able to hang it from this end over here. So. That's the method that I'm using. I'm going to do a lot more explaining than I normally do. And this is going to be a longer video than normal because I, a lot of haunted houses want to build these for their show. Um, and the commercially available ones um, are very nice and expensive. And maybe you do buy a couple ghost ride sides of beef and hang those up front and then make a few of your own to hang in the back. I'm leaving this end out so that I could hook a slip ring and chain through here uh, in order to help hold this up.
because I have the length, I'm going to tie it off right through here also. I put two knots in it there. I'm going to put a zip tie in to hold those knots in place. Then another knot below the zip tie. Cutting off the zip tie. Then I'm going to tape this up. The real purpose of the tape is to just hold the knot together. And that is now attached to that handle and I feel confident hanging 30, 40 pounds in here uh, from this. The next step here is I'm going to build a framework based off the outline that I've already done and the placement of the bucket. I'm going to build that framework out of pool noodles. The pool noodles, I'm going to stick them together with a heat gun. Heat gun is on high. I shoot the, they're separate. I shoot the heat gun at the pool noodles. I put them together. I wanna make sure they never go out of frame so no one thinks it's a magic trick. Those pool noodles are now bonded. That's a nice and strong bond. They're melted together. I'm gonna to pull them apart. So you can see, see how bonded they are? That's nice and strong. Now, of course, it'll come apart, but I got part of a one poodle noodle attached to the other, and I didn't bond those very long. So that is the bonding technique. Heat really close together, push them together uh, while they're both still hot. That will take a little bit of practice to get right. Once you're good at it, you're good at it, and it's fast. So I'm going to build a cow now. This is not a tutorial on how to make long vines out of pool noodles, but you certainly could make long vines out of pool noodles. I'm not just using full pool noodles, I'm also splitting some in half. Patreon is what allows me to make big projects like this side of beef. And it is Patreon support and Patreon dollars that allows me to do bigger projects in order to make your haunted houses better. If you are a home haunter and you want to make cooler stuff, if you are a pro haunter and you have to make cool stuff, maybe you've benefited from my, my videos uh, and you might want to join Patreon as a thank you. I greatly appreciate that um, because I, turns out, it'll, I like to make cool stuff. So thank you to everybody who does support me on Patreon and um, consider it if you enjoy the content of this channel. At least like and subscribe. I just want to show you, this is the back leg. This is the back leg of the side of beef. Uh, and this is half of it. I'm building the outside of the cow first, and then I'll flip it and then I'll build the inside of the cow. So look at how the shape and the structure of this and how it's built. Make your own decisions, uh, but keep 
structure, keep engineering in mind. Right here is where I joined those two pool noodles together. That joint is inside of this. So this is this piece here, this half piece that I uh, heat bonded in there. That piece, of course, reinforces that. And then when I added this outer strut, I heat bonded it right over top of that joint too. So anywhere I've got a joint, I have it reinforced, especially a butt joint like that. It's just not as engineeringly strong. So this is a nice leg. It's uh, all the joints are sticking. Um, practice a bit. I like the size of this and I'm gonna keep going, but look at the structure and look at how I'm building this. And you build yours kind of accordingly. I'm not gonna give you exact measurements. You don't need exact measurements. This is the leg that I showed you. It's laid out on top of the tracing. And uh, I'm just gonna show you this heat bond uh, fairly close. I'm just gonna hold that until I think it's cooled down. And now that's, that's dang well bonded. So I just realized that my leg is a little bit out of line it's because I lined this up with right here and that's sort of where I wanted it, remember? So my body is kind of at the wrong angle because this is the line where I want it and this is the line where the body is going off. So I'm going to pull it back into line by just adding a piece and I'm going to uh, attach it here. I angle cut it because the more surface area, the stronger the bond. And I'm going to attach it here, and then I'll angle cut it here and pull this back down into line, okay? So here is another technique, all right? I want, there's a leg on top of this. I'm going to put that on top. But underneath, I want this piece to pretty much fold over and go this way. I'm going to cut a wedge out. Heat the wedge. And then bond it right back onto itself. And now, that kicks over the way that I want.
So you can see now I'm building kind of a cage for the bucket. It's not holding any weight. All the weight is being held by the strap. It's just this support structure kind of around it uh, to keep the bucket in place down there at the bottom. So while I'm doing that, uh, I want to keep track of how many pool noodles I use so I can give you an accurate report. I brought over 10 and I've used 10 so far and I, have, I brought in 10 more. So I have 10 more sitting there in that can ready to use. Uh, but I think I'm going to be able to get this guy done in uh, 20 pool noodles, which means the body bulk is 20 bucks. So this is the outside of the cow, the outside of the side of beef, and I don't want this lump to be real obvious where it transitions from smooth to this half. So to get that thinner, I'm just going to cut this at a bevel. And now when I glue this down, I'll be able to make that pretty smooth. See, now I don't have that giant bump. I've got just a little bit of a dip. So that's another technique to use to make this nice and smooth. I'm going to keep going and add a few more support ribs out here to beef up, no pun intended, uh, this outside. And then uh, I'll be ready to flip it over and do the other side. Test hang. All right, so right now I have half of my side of beef done. I'll cage in the bucket on the rest of the bottom, finish out the ribs on the interior, and then we skin it.
So this is a hanging side of beef. This will be the inside of it. And you can see we have a nice rib look already on the interior. I'm actually going to leave some of these exposed look like rib bones that were cut through because that looks like the end of a rib bone. Same tr is true on this side. You have an almost a spine built. We have lower leg, chest cavity, upper leg. Bucket down there for weight, nestled cleanly. Uh, this side is even a little more complete. It's a little more caged in. Upper body, body. That's the head right there where the head would be cut off. Going down to that lower leg. Of course, the front leg is cut off a little shorter, kind of right at the elbow. So that is a side of beef. So let's talk skinning options. Uh, you have options when it comes to skinning this. I'm going to skin it one way, but I'm going to lay out a couple other ways where you could skin this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, plastic wrap this whole thing, hit it with the heat gun, shrink that down, and then paint that as my skin. And I'm going to use the heat to bond all of the pallet wrap together. Um, then I'm going to paint it, and then I'm going to pallet wrap it again on top of the paint to give me a nice translucent layer and to lock in uh, all the paint and detailing that I do. Another option would be to take latex house paint and like bed sheets and dip the latex house paint into, uh, dip the bed sheets into 50-50 house paint and water and wrap this all up with fabric. Don't use any straight edges, use ripped edges and that will give you a real nice thick tough skin that you can then paint. Another way to skin it is to use the duct tape corpsing technique that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago. You can look at a video for that. Duct tape corpsing. And that actually would look really good on this whole corpse. Uh, but there are as many ways to skin this as you can imagine. I mean, you, we have a nice structure. This is a nice, easy way to do that structure. And it was fast. Uh, I did this in an hour and 10 minutes. So that means it'll take you guys like two and a half hours tops. So maybe three. But still, there, the amount of savings that you can do is going to be pretty high. We just have to get the look of it um, to a equally nice level. I'm going to wrap it in the pallet wrap. And I'm going to spray paint it first so I'm wrapping something that's already painted. Since this looks like musculature, let's make it look like a musculature. I'm not starting by wrapping the whole thing top to bottom. I'm going to start by spray adhesiving in sheets on the inside so that uh, I can heat gun that. I want to hide the bucket a little bit. I actually like that rib structure that we have on the interior. I mean, that's, that's really nice. So I want to have that a bit exposed and uh, I'm going to spray adhesive sheets on so that I don't just have a big gaping hole when I wrap the whole thing and then heat gun that area, it will open up. Right now is a great time to add the weight you want to the bucket because we're about to cover it up. Having two people would make this way easier. It is heat gun time for the first layer. I'm going to end up doing this probably three times to get the thickness of skin that I want on this.
every time I do a layer and I tighten it down, I'm gonna paint it again. For the record, the color that I'm using right now is Gloss Colonial Red. That's what I'm using right now. 2X Gloss Colonial Red. Let's get detailing. Before I paint the outside red again, I'm gonna paint those ribs in there white. All of this is important because this is what's gonna make it kinda of look more realistic. So I like that I have the red as a base. I'm probably gonna do some muscle paint work on those and uh, just break out the muscle groups with paint real quick, and then I'll do a layer of fat over top. I brought my uh, side of beef down for this. I'm gonna spray paint black lines on that will represent the musculature of this side of beef. I now have the meat of the cow. To simulate the fat and to give another layer in more detail, I'm gonna use caulk. And I'm gonna use a white caulking, uh, and this is the latex acrylic caulk. It's the cheap stuff. This package of 12 was $25 at Home Depot. I'll link it. So this is white caulking, but it's paintable. And I'm just gonna smear it on everywhere the fat ought to be. I've just done the two areas that are really hard to reach while it's hanging, and then I'm gonna hang it and do the rest. I'm making a decision to open this up a little bit and expose more of those ribs. I trust the construction and I just want to see more inside rather than having it be just too deep. Uh, this skin on the inside here, it just covers up too much. So I'm going to open it up. So now I'm just taking some yellow uh, and I'm spraying this very lightly on there. I do not want to turn it sun yellow, that's the name of this color. I want to mist this on and make it look like fat. That's what we're doing, this is fat. So I'm using the yellow misted from a distance to look like fat. got to be a little more yellow than I want. I'm gonna knock it down with some brown. Terracotta from Design Master, and I'm just gonna tone that yellow down a little bit. Bring it back a little towards flesh, a little more towards fat.
So there's the exposed ribs that gives it some depth. Even if you look down, looking at the insides, Every layer had paint. Every layer had detail. So we're gonna let this dry completely and then give it a gloss coat. I want to add a gloss to this. Look at that glistening goodness. Uh, there's several ways that you can do that. One of, the way, one of the things that you can do is uh, you can just spray it with Plasti-Dip Glossifier. Uh, comes in a spray can, it makes things glossy, it's kind of nice. You could spray down the whole thing with Liquitex high gloss varnish and that would do it. I am actually going to spread a very thin coating of clear silicone caulk on there. Uh, I think that's going to give it a nice fatty look and a fatty texture. I think that this will be nice, it'll also add a layer of protection. So again, just like the other, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot it in my hand. When in doubt, shoot it in your hand. Yes, yeah, now I can see that that's giving it a real nice gloss, and I know that this stuff uh, is just going to do a really good job of hardening and protecting this. I'm going to put it heavy where guests will touch it, uh, so it'll have a good feel also, and lighter at the top and the bottom where it won't be touched by guests so much. That looks much more side of beefy already to me. So here we have a finished hanging budget side of beef. It took seven tubes of silicone caulking to cover the whole thing. And that got it really nice and glistening. And that silicone really did a nice job on there of getting it to be gross. I don't know how much you can see of it, but now it has a nice um, fat layer on there. And that's, that's what I was going for. So yeah, this is our side of beef. And you can see here when I get close, what that silicone is doing on a lot of that detail. See that glisten you have on there? And it's just gross to touch. So this is a side of beef. Um, so the cost of this is under $100. Uh, just under a hundred dollars and If you wanted to you could of course spend 150 or you could spend more But this is a side of beef and how many butcher shop themed sets are there? Without sides of beef and that is a wrong in the world that I intend to write and we can write it just by Making it yourself you may try to make this and it might not turn out as good as mine and then you say, well, those are worth the price, and you buy some. Great, but it's meat. It's really hard to mess up. All you have to do is just make it bloodier, and it'll be okay. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I monitor the comments of my videos for years, so put them in the comments, because I want you to make these. Uh, haunted houses need more beef. That's a sweet side of beef. Go make stuff!
or make them all yourself or buy them all. Mr. Moneybags.